In this video, I'll cover some libgdx classes, sprites, spriter's resource, and GIMP. To begin this video, I need to correct a mistake I made in an earlier video when I was describing how to set up the blank libgdx project. I entered the wrong game name. Isn't that ridiculous? Anyway, I entered kid space ridiculous with no A. It should have been kid space ridiculous. My bad, sorry. The only difference you'll see is in the Eclipse workspace for some of the names. To fix this problem, I chose to delete the Kid Ridiculous folder that had been created by libgdx, also to delete the Eclipse workspace folder, and start afresh by creating the libgdx project again. Desktop launcher. This looks like where we left off. Let's jump into the Kid Ridiculous class by control clicking on Kid Ridiculous. Let's change application adapter to game to give the kid ridiculous class more functionality, like the ability to set screen. By using set screen, we can move some of the code out of the main game class and into the screen classes. That way we can keep our code separate for the menu screen, the play screen, the intro screen, etc. We'll create a play screen class and we'll pass it this game instance so that the play screen can use some of the game properties. Create class. For the screen classes, we'll keep them all together in a separate package called screen. Here's our new empty screen class. Back to the Kid Ridiculous class. Now we need to create a constructor for the play screen class so we can pass it a reference to the game. The play screen needs to keep a reference to the game class so that it can access the sprite batch field and draw sprites that the user will see. Save the play screen file. The error on the set screen line has disappeared because we have a proper constructor. Now we can start moving code from the Kid Ridiculous game class into the play screen class. Let's start with the texture. First, we need the field for the texture. Now we need the code to create the texture. To render the texture, we'll need to take the code from the Kid Ridiculous class and replace it with a call to super.render. Since we already called setScreen with a new play screen, now when the render method of the game class is called, it will call the screens render method. And paste the render code. We're getting an error for the batch variable because this class doesn't have a batch field. Instead, we'll be getting the batch field, the sprite batch field, from the game class. We're still getting an error because we need to make the sprite batch public so that the play screen can access it. Also, we need to move the dispose method. The dispose method will release memory when it's not needed. You might be wondering, why do we need to manually release the memory? Doesn't Java already have an automatic garbage collector? I'm actually talking about the memory that's in use on the video card, and Java doesn't really manage that so much as libgdx does. So we need to use the dispose methods from time to time. So save it and back to Kid Ridiculous. Save Kid Ridiculous. Now let's test it to make sure everything is still working. Good. Ah, I forgot to make sure that the play screen's dispose class will be called. To do that, we need to go to the kid ridiculous class and in the dispose method, call super.dispose. This will in turn call the play screen's dispose method. And clean up the imports a little bit. Now it's time to add a little bit more functionality. Let's wrap the texture inside of a sprite. The sprite will give us the functionality to move that texture around on the screen very easily. Create 
create a new sprite and pass it the texture. Now when we want to draw the texture, or rather the sprite, we're going to call the sprite's draw method and pass the sprite batch to the draw method. Let's run it again to make sure everything's still working. Okay, good. So it's nice that we can draw the Bad Logic Games logo on a red background, but let's make it a little more interesting. Let's have it move to the right. We'll start by creating a field to keep track of the sprite's X position. The sprite's going to start at the bottom left of the screen, at X equals zero. To animate the sprite, we need to update its position each time the render method is called. Let's create a method to wrap up that functionality. The sprite starts on the left side of the screen, so adding one each frame will make it move to the right one pixel every 60th of a second. We've updated our local variable for the X position of the sprite on the screen, but this won't actually update the sprite, so use that sprite's set position method and pass it the X position. Now let's test it. Looks like it works. So it's nice that we can move the Bad Logic logo from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, but let's mix it up a little. Maybe we need something different for the sprite. Let's make it a Mario sprite. Let's check out the sprite as resource. Go to the website, scroll down to Ness, looking in the S block, and I'll control F to find Super Mario. Let's get a sprite of Mario specifically. Looks good. Let's download this one. Go to the folder with the download, copy it, and we can go to Eclipse and paste it directly into our assets folder. There it is. Now that's a long name. I don't want to have to try and write it out myself. How about I just copy it? So copy qualified name. When I copy qualified name, it copies a bit too much information. So I'm going to delete the kidridiculous-core-asset part of this. Save the file and let's test it. Good, we can animate a whole lot of Mario's all at once, but maybe we want to animate just one. To do that, we're going to need to edit that sprite sheet file. GIMP is my go-to tool for this sort of thing. I'll briefly go over to the GIMP website and show you where to get the download. So I'm going to start up GIMP. Go to my Downloads folder, and just drag and drop the sprite sheet into GIMP. Select just one sprite. Copy it. Paste it as a new image. Let's check it. Now you might think it's kind of weird that you see those gray tiles in the background. That's actually telling you that there's transparency in the picture. So when this sprite is drawn, any of those gray tiled areas will be transparent and you'll see the background. Now we need to export our Mario sprite, but where can we put it? Let's go to Eclipse and get the exact path to the Kid Ridiculous Assets folder. So right click on the Assets, click properties, and in the window that comes up, it will tell you the location, and we'll have an icon beside the location that you can click on to open the folder. Let's go into the Assets folder, copy the full path, close that stuff, 
and go back to GIMP. Enter the path, press enter. And let's call our file mario1.png. Export it with the defaults. Close that. Now when we go to Eclipse and we look at our Assets folder, we only see those two original files. Where's the new mario1.png file? To see it, we need to refresh the folder. So right click on the folder and click Refresh. This time I'll just type in the name of the file. Save it. And test run. Okay, that looks good. A little hard to see on the red background though. Maybe we could add a bit more contrast by making the background black. Looking at the call to the GL clear color method, I see that we're passing one red, zero green, zero blue, and one alpha. So we're gonna have a red background with no transparency. Let's change that to 0001, black background with no transparency. And check it out. Okay, it looks like we have one Mario sprite animating moving to the right. Success! If you like this video, you can hit the like button. And if you want to know when more of these type of videos come out, you can hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching!